this is compound interest stock guy and today in this video I'm just gonna do a review of some of the things that I've really learned in 2019 in the stock market in life so stay tuned this is a learning experience I have to look back and take inventory on my personal investing decisions um, you know I got to be accountable for my actions right you know I uh, if I'm not to do that then I'm not gonna know how to make the right decisions in the future so say I invested into really shitty things or I made mistakes if I'm able to fit to understand where I went wrong then I can catch myself the next time you know it's I want to look at it as a analogy as far as a pool goes you know I like pool you know you look at the shot say say you got your cue ball right at the very back um, all the way across the table and you got to do a little touch spot on like just on the on the far left side of the eight ball or whatever to win the game and you're just a, like a tiny hair or a a C, <laughs> a C hair. That's a, that's a trade talk. Uh, I'm not gonna say that word because it's uh, kind of confrontational or uh, not not the nicest word for uh, people. May not want to hear that word. Anyways, uh, it's uh, it's the reality of things. Is you know you just a little bit off, and it, it would have been all the, all the differences and stuff. Um, the little things make the details. Um, so let's get into this if you're new to the channel please subscribe hit the bell down below give me thumbs up I appreciate it I'm not a financial advisor this is just for entertainment information purposes do not buy or sell based on anything I talk about buy or sell after you did your own research due diligence and you like the investments you're pursuing all right so let's get into this okay so one of the things that I've been doing badly is I invested a lot of money into warrants not like amazing amount of money but a little bit of money and you know I could have taken my profits on uh, harvest one warrants when I, they were worth about seven and a half cents even if it would have got six cents I would have done very well on those and I figured that you know the market's just gonna go crazy at the end of the year it still got till end of January to to go up to 230 but the probability on that's not very high so another like I'm glad I didn't buy the Xena warrants like and load it up on those that would have been really stupid um, no offense to anybody who's got them but I mean the chance of those hitting anytime soon isn't very likely um, but I mean if you got a long time horizon I mean maybe they will go up to you know make some money on those but I wouldn't be buying them buying the shares right now is the smartest thing to do if you want to invest in Xena but that's uh, your own uh, investment decisions but things that, such as that um, getting too excited to get into a stock you know you don't need to be the first person to invest in that stock you can make a lot of money if you are say the last so say for example you uh, you know you waited all year round to get canopy growth or you waited all year round to get Aurora cannabis or true leaf or whatever and then you get get it right then it's really hard to do that's why it's scale in scale out approach then you can get a good average but it cash is king that's another lesson I've always I've knew that but at the same time I always think like oh I want to be aggressive but this year was not the year to be aggressive in the market because this was the year to demolish all the longs in the cannabis sector and uh, you know get them all scared because what else have I learned in this year is uh, convertible debentures is a very bad thing um, because they can convert it at whatever price they want pretty much like there's there's types of uh, uh, like fine reading that you know that's like for example the the uh, options like the convertible debentures on Aurora for uh, for their yeah the convertible debentures that just got converted they were originally at $13 and they got converted around like three fifteen based on the VWAP so that's another thing um, what else have I learned 
is that the RSI can go down very, very low. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a buying opportunity because um, uh, especially if you have a, a long term, uh, if you're in going long, like longer than a day trade or whatever, it's not always necessarily because it can keep going down, 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 down. So that's something that I learned. What else have I learned is that if there was a negative article about, I mean, if there was a really nice article about a company, like say Ceneva, right? Uh, the, uh, the canopy of California. Well, they can make, anybody is able to make articles, right? And it doesn't mean they're right. You know, I've been wrong a lot on things. Um, doesn't matter how much research you do, it's an executional risk, you know? So, um, another thing I learned is there's EBITDA, and EBITDA is a very important thing. Uh, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and assets. That's something that we as investors really need to be cognizant about in the future. Uh, I've also learned that just because it says a net income doesn't mean it was a pure net income because they can add, say, like take uh, money off, off the options on their uh, goodwill or I'm, so, I mean, it's the options. They can take them off their share structure and then that'll be added to their net income as a positive. So that's really a trick that companies can do as well as the inventory and all that. If say if the company grows like uh, like 500 million worth of cannabis, but they can't sell it all. Well, you got to like justify like uh, uh, that. I also learned that the price of cannabis can go down lower and um, I've also learned that the Canadian government is terrible at um, making the business run efficiently and that they should lay off uh, what they're doing. I learned that selling on the news is a big big thing and you really need to be cognizant of that. I knew that before but it's becoming ingrained in my brain. I have to do that. You have to learn about the, what the options are for the, the share structure. Um, little details. You learn about uh, learning about accounts receivable, accounts payable, all those things, uh, the liabilities and the assets. Uh, I mean, I knew this before, but the market can stay insolvent long the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay insolvent. So that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I can't really do enough information on this series. If I get a lot of likes and people find a lot of value from this information, I may make a second series. It's all up to you guys' uh, you know, discretion. If I get a lot of likes and feedback, then I will uh, think about doing another uh, video on this but I am gonna try to end this off in the next couple minutes. Um, you learn that you know investing into silver and gold is a great hedge when the market's unstable. That is a very good hedge if you have a good gold or silver miner. That is a very good way to, uh, to handle and cash is king. Cash is king. That's what I've learned. And uh, you know, I learned I learned with my condo selling that was that was one of my best my best deals that I did this year. I made a lot of profit on that. That was pretty much the best deal that I did in the last few years. You learn that um, the the amount of burn rate on a company can be can really hamper the company. You know, so you really have to be cognizant about. Uh, the company's burn rate so say the company's got 50 million dollars in cash and say they own, they're burning 12 million dollars every quarter well at that rate they're gonna be out of uh, business in a year so they're gonna have to dilute and that'll affect the share structure that's really something we need to be cognizant as investors about um, very cognizant um, you learn that you know the hype there's Another thing you learn is your trend is your friend, you know, you can't fight it. I've also learned that 
it would have been a great thing to do is to hedge my bets. That is what the big institutions do. That is what the smart investors do. And that is what the smart investor in me wants to be doing in the future. If you're very long on a company and all that, or the industry, you have to protect your, your long position to a certain degree. You have to have insurance. You have to do puts. You have to have long-term puts out because you can't just be a bullheaded freak, freakazoid and think that the market's just gonna keep going up in the sector because you don't control the markets. So you have to have the downside protected. So if I was to buy, say, like uh, two or three or four or five uh, puts at uh, Canopy Growth at, at say $50 Canadian when it was back at $70 and it was good till say like November or something like that on all those I would have made a good return on investment and that would have made the downside risk uh, the downside uh, a lot nicer landing than what I've dealt with so I've also learned that what I need to do is focus on just the pro profitable companies and the companies that are really getting to their EBITDA positive. Uh, there is no, there isn't much room for speculation in the cannabis sector right now. The money's dried up. Maybe if the safe banking happens, then the market's just going to push up all these stocks and they're going to go up 10x. But you cannot count on that. And living on hopium is not a good way to, you know, handle your investments, hoping that the stock will go up. Anyways, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy giving you the tools of the trade that I've learned in all my mistakes this year. Keep compounding your info. I'm out. Peace.